everyone welcome back to another episode of let's talk thursday so today we're going to be talking about herd immunity grab your warm beverage of choice let's just get right into it why do we care about herd immunity now well we always did but now it's right around the corner for holiday season we got diwali coming up we got thanksgiving we got kwanzaa we got hanukkah we got christmas we have all these great holidays coming up, but we also have one uninvited friend. We have to acknowledge the fact that this person, this event, this occurrence is still very prevalent in our lives right now, and we just should be mindful of it. So why does herd immunity matter? So herd immunity is when you have a large portion, the herd, if you will, of a given population that is immune to a specific disease. So what that means is that decreases the amount of person-to-person -person transmission of the actual disease. An important concept that we need to know as it relates to herd immunity is a concept of threshold proportion. So what that means is what proportion of the population is capable of getting and spreading the disease. So in order to achieve herd immunity, you need to have the proportion of people that are immune to the disease be lower than the threshold proportion so that way the disease incidence decreases so you have less people with the disease and there's less spread so that is when you achieve herd immunity how do we know what proportion of the population needs to be infected with the disease in order to achieve herd immunity you may ask well friends here's a tricky part it really varies from disease to disease the other thing that we need to talk about is huh, how do you achieve herd immunity so there are two main ways. One is vaccines, and the other is natural immunization. Okay, so let's talk about vaccines, all right? Why are vaccines a great way of achieving herd immunity? Well, it's because you get all the benefits of being immune to the disease without having to experience the possible complications that you can have of the disease itself. So in an ideal situation, you would have a vaccine and you would be giving this vaccine to all the people that are able to take it because you have a portion of the population, i.e. newborns and people with compromised immune systems that can't take vaccines. But if the large proportion of the population has been vaccinated, that means the entire community is effectively immune because you can't spread it person to person. So the people who can't get the vaccine also won't get the disease. You see what I'm saying? Just like with everything else, there are some limitations to vaccines. So some of these that we can talk about are the fact that you may have to get revaccinated because the protection that the vaccine gives you may decrease over time in some situations. The other situation is that, hey, no one likes getting shots, okay? So because people might not like getting shots, they might forget, life gets in the way. If you have to take multiple shots, some people may not finish the entire panel of shots that they need to get in order to achieve the protection that is necessary to achieve immunization and effectively herd immunity. The other problem is that there are some people in the community that oppose vaccines due to religious reasons or personal reasons and whatever their reasons may be, so they don't get these vaccines. So the people that don't want to get vaccinated tend to live in the same communities or the same regions. So as a result of that, it, within that region, you don't have herd immunity because you have a higher portion of people, aka the threshold proportion, that are capable of getting and spreading the disease and you have a lower population of people who are immunized. So the disease increases. So that's something that we have to be mindful of. For example, um, measles. Measles is something that has a vaccine for, and because of vaccines, you have globally a low rate of measles occurring. However, now we see, because of anti-vaccinators and other uh, people who oppose vaccination, you have a resurgence of measles, and that's something that we have to be careful of. So the other way to get herd immunity is through natural infection. So what that means is that you get the disease, you recover from the disease, and then you have antibodies that protect you from the disease. So there's some problems with that because right now there's no research that shows 
um, that if you get coronavirus and you recover from it, the antibodies will stay long enough or even give you the protection necessary to prevent a second infection. So we don't even know. So all the people throwing COVID parties, I'm looking at you. Cut it out. Don't do it. Preliminary research actually shows that some coronaviruses, especially like the milder forms, you are actually susceptible of getting it again, even though you have already recovered from it. And these are usually the mild cases. So you could possibly get reinfected after a period of months, months to years. So basically overall, all that to say, there is more research that is required to go into the efficacy and the safety and the protection from the COVID-19 antibodies. So before you start throwing or attending COVID parties in attempt to achieve herd immunity, just be mindful of that. Okay.